Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2017 Subaru Outback Wagon, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the eTrailer.com Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver. Many of our Subaru customers use their Outbacks to do a little bit of everything, whether it be pulling a trailer, using an accessory like a bike rack or cargo carrier. This is going to give us a connection point to be able to get the job done. And not to mention, since we'll have an opportunity to carry our accessory back here, we're going to have space up top freed up. That way we're still able to use any rooftop accessories. One of the things I like about this hitch is that it's gonna sit back a little bit behind our bumper and it's gonna have a carbide matte black finish. So it's really gonna blend in nicely on the back of our Subaru. It's also gonna give us some really good clearance. And so what I mean by that is the end of the receiver tube it's going to be just about even with our back bumper. So this should work out really well for any folding accessories like a bike rack or a cargo carrier, for example. Since this is a class three hitch, it's gonna give us that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening and a reinforced collar for extra strength. It's gonna have the standard 5.8 size pinhole. Now pin and clip does not come included, but if you need one, you can find it here at eTrailer. These safety chain openings are going to be a plate style. And although the holes aren't huge, they're gonna give us a decent amount of room to use just about any size hook that we might have. Now, as far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's gonna have a 600 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. So that's gonna be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. The 600 pounds is a pretty high rating, so that should be more than enough for pretty much any accessory that you'd wanna use. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, it's going to be 4,000 pounds. So that's going to be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that's the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Now I do always like to recommend, it's never a bad idea to check with your Outback's owner's manual to make sure your Subaru can pull much weight. So in my opinion, I like this hitch because it's going to work good for a little bit of everything. It's going to give you a lot of versatility and be able to function for whatever you need it to do. And I really like the matte black finish. It's going to blend in nicely, but still have kind of a rugged look to it. Now I'm going to give you a couple of measurements. And you're going to use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be about 15 and a half inches. So you're going to use that to figure out whether you need to get a ball mount with either a drop or a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole, to the edge of our rear bumper, that's going to be about four inches. And that's going to help you figure out if any folding accessories that you might have can be stored in the upright position without contacting the bumper. Now, as far as the installation goes, it is a little bit involved, but as long as you take your time and stay focused, you should have no problem getting it done. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and install the hitch together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be working here underneath the back of our Subaru and we're gonna to need to lower our exhaust to give us room to put our hitch up. Now, what I do recommend is taking a strap and running it from one side to the other just to help kind of support that exhaust since we're gonna be removing it from the hangers. So to get the exhaust lowered, we're gonna have two rubber isolator hangers on each one of our mufflers. Now, since ours is dual exhaust, we're only gonna have these two. If your Subaru has a single exhaust, you're gonna have three of these hangers, but they're gonna work and look exactly the same. With that being said, you can spray them down with some soapy water to help make it easier to get off. And you can just take a pry bar and pry the rubber portion. off of the metal hanger. Same thing for the second one. That pried off. And repeat the process for the other side. Now I wanna mention, both sides are gonna be set up the exact same way. So from this point on, anything we do to this side of our vehicle, we're also going to do to the other side. Now I'm also going to remove this other rubber hanger. If we follow the exhaust towards the front of our vehicle, we'll have it right here. 
and that'll just give us more wiggle room to lower our exhaust and make it easier to work. That off, we should be able to loosen up our strap and drop our exhaust down a little bit. What we can do now is remove our heat shield. It's going to be held in place by four 10 millimeter bolts. We can lower it down and set it off to the side here. On our frame rail, we're going to have two rubber plugs that we need to pop out. One here and one here. So to get these out, you can just take a flathead screwdriver, kind of pry underneath the head of it, and get them removed. So this hole here closest to the front of our car, we're actually going to have to enlarge it and make it bigger to create an access hole for our hardware to go through. So this is going to end up going up inside of the frame rail. As you can see, it's not nearly big enough for that to happen. So we're going to use a step bit. We can use a hand file or a cutter tool to get this enlarged. And you need to make it big enough so that our spacer block and our bolt can pass through there pretty easily. So here's what our enlarged hole looks like. It's just big enough to get our spacer block inside as well as the head of the bolt. Now that we know our hardware is going to fit through, and since we have some bare metal here from where we drilled, what I'm going to do is take some spray paint. I'm going to give it a coating to help protect that metal. We'll give that a few minutes to dry, and we can come back and get our hardware in place. So we're going to grab one of our fish wires, and we're going to take the coiled end of it and put it through this smaller hole here towards the very back of our Subaru. And we're going to push it towards the front. And we're wanting that coiled in to drop out of the access hole that we created. Sometimes it'll drop right out, other times it won't. In our case, it didn't. So you may have to kind of reach in there with your finger and grab a hold of it to help kind of pull it out. Once we have it out, what we're going to do is take our spacer block, put that over the fish wire and our carriage bolt. We'll thread onto it. And we can feed the hardware to the frame rail one at a time. Pull the other end of our fish wire and get it to drop out like that. Now with an extra set of hands, we can raise our hitch in a position. We're going to take our fish wire and put it through the corresponding hole in our hitch. There we go up and over our exhaust. We'll lift it up. Get our carriage bolt to drop through. Just pull that fish wire off. Then we can take a flange nut. We'll get each side started hand tight so the hitch will support itself. What we're gonna do now is snug down the hardware on each side using a 19 millimeter socket. Now with our hitch in place, we're going to use the other hole in it as a template to create a hole into our frame rail. That way our hardware can come down and help secure it. So I'm going to take the drill bit that's indicated in the instructions and create an opening. With our hole created, we can take our fish wire again, coiled in, put it through the hole, and we're going to want it to drop out of our access hole. From there, we're going to take a spacer block, put it over the fish wire, and then we're going to take a carriage bolt, get that threaded on, 
going to feed the hardware up into the frame rail and drop it down through the hitch. Then take our fish wire off and secure it using a flange nut. Once our other two bolts are in place, we can go ahead and snug them down. With all of our hardware snugged up, we can then come back with a torque wrench and tighten it all down to the amount specified in the instructions. We can grab our heat shield and get it trimmed according to the diagram and the instructions. So I used a marker here just to give you a good idea of where we're going to be cutting. And with this material removed, we're going to be able to reinstall it without it interfering with our hitch. So it is fairly lightweight metal. So I'm just going to use a pair of 10 snips to get that material removed. With the trim dial, we can raise it back into position. I want to point out, make sure the back side of it goes above that exhaust hanger. That way you don't have any issues trying to get the exhaust re-secured later. And we're going to re-secure our heat shield using that factory hardware that we removed earlier. I'm only going to use three of the four bolts to re-secure the heat shield because the fourth one would have went right here in this area and obviously we trimmed that portion of our heat shield out and the hitch is now blocking it. Three is going to be more than enough to hold it up tight and keep it from rattling around and making noise. Now we're able to raise our exhaust back into position and get the hangers in place, that way it will support itself. Once the exhaust is supporting itself again, we can remove our strap. And that will finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com class 3 trailer hitch receiver on our 2017 Subaru Outback Wagon.